Angami Zapufizo was a Naga nationalist leader with British nationality. Under his influence, the Naga National Council asserted the right to self-determination, which took the shape of armed resistance after the Indian state imposed the Armed Forces Special Powers Act in 1958. Naga secessionist groups regard him as the father of the Naga nation. Angami Zapufizo belonged to the Mirumakil of Khonama village of Angami Naga tribe. AZ Fizo started his schooling in Khonuma, then went on to Baptist Mission School in Kohima and completed his high school at Shillong, Assam in 1927. During his school days in Shillong, he consistently set an example among his peers not to be deterred by the British rulers dress code bully against non-Europeans from wearing neckties. His contemporaries thought of him as someone always impeccable behave and intellectually seemed to be ahead of his time. After completing his studies at Shillong, AZ Fizo returned to Kohima in 1927. Usually, on completing studies, everyone immediately sought a salaried job, but he was determined to remain self-employed and represented insurance company as agent. At the same time, he introduced a number of business projects with a view to motivate the Nagas to business enterprise culture with mixed results. Like his father and later his elder brother before him, he then visited Burma, this time as an agent of Sun Life Assurance Company of Canada in 1934. He found the country beautiful and decided to spend some time in Burma. During this time, he came to know many prominent figures from diverse walk of life but stayed clear of Burmese politics. Angami Zapufizo, who fought for independence for the northeastern Indian state of Nagaland. During the Second World War, AZ Fizo was in Burma. When the British colonial rulers called for volunteers to fight for the king, he offered to join the army in 1939. British told him he was too advanced for the Royal Artillery, so they moved him to Royal Engineers. On completion of training, the British officer insisted he would be inducted as an Anglo-Burmese or an Anglo-Indian on the ground that there was no provision for a Sistic. AZ Fizo was adamant that his nationality, Naga, for which one major sample, the commanding officer, reacted outrageously. As a consequence, he withdrew his service to Great Britain. Before granting independence to India in 1946, some British officials sounded out to the Naga representatives a proposal known as the Copeland Plan compromising the then Naga Hills and the surrounding highland extending to the Bay of Bengal. AZ Fizo highlighted its ratification particularly how it might be taken by fellow Asian neighbors on allowing foreigners to stay. Following the rejection by the Nagas, the British did not pursue the matter further. As the British were preparing for their withdrawal from India, Fizo separately met the Assamese, Garos, Khasas, Lashis, Mikirs, Abos, Mishmas, and Maitais leaders in an attempt to convince them to form independent countries of their own instead of joining the proposed Union of India. However, his efforts were failed. On August 14, 1947, one day before India gained its independence, Fizo declared the independence of Naga region. Fizo's influence in the Naga National Council (NNC) increased in late 1940s after the NNC secretary MT Alibao retired from politics for an appointment in the Indian Frontier Administrative Services. 
Fizo became the NNC chairman in October to November 1949 after defeating Bizarangami of Zakama village by a margin of one vote. Under his leadership, the NNC inclined towards seeking secession from India. Fizo urged the Naga people to boycott the Indian elections. On 1st January 1951, AZ Fizo announced to the world, the Naga people will hold a voluntary national plebiscite to determine the genuine democratic wishes of the people for or against the independent Naga nation. On May 16, 1951, the Nagas under the banner of the Naga National Council made a solemn and irrevocable vow and symbolically declared to the world the desire and aspiration to live as a free and sovereign nation which is popularly known in Naga history as the plebiscite of May 16, 1951. Observers, journalists and international news agencies were invited to witness the proceedings. The historic, voluntary plebiscite held on May 16, 1951 at different locations was well organized and marshaled by volunteers. No one could have foreseen such enthusiastic participation that amazingly delivered 99.9% .9 verdict in favor of an independent Naga nation. Today, Naga Plebiscite Day is celebrated on May 16 every year. Henceforth, the Naga people indelible established their national identity, whereas, in the past, it lacked explicit authenticity. Equally significant was the Naga people universally empowered NNC President AZ Fizo to implement his vision for Naga Nation. The endurance of May 16, 1951, mandate derived from a tradition of bonding whereby the Naga people separately expressed by word of honor that the people stand by to defend the independence of the Naga nation to the end. He met the Indian Prime Minister Jawaharlal Nehru in December 1951 near Tezpur in Assam in March 1952 at Delhi and in July 1952 at Dibrugad. He also met with Jaipal Singh in 1952. He was arrested in Burma for illegal entry. In a decade of unremitting drive towards nation building, since 1946, the Indian rulers in New Delhi made numerous attempts to lure away the Naga leader, AZ Fizo, with money, possession, power, and fame without any success. At the same time, he was ceaselessly harassed by Indian agents and always very close to Indian prisons. On at least half a dozen times, he was detained by the Indian authorities in different places. The duration of spending in prison varied from a few weeks to over six months in variable on trumped-up charges. There were times, the Indian authorities switched on powerful light continuously day and night in his cell for many days in an attempt to make him insane because of his firm stand on Naga case. The Naga leader could not stand wasting time, even inside Indian prison, he would continue to perfect his plan of actions. Following the national mandate, a mutable and trusted with NNC, in 1951, the Naga leader pursued relentlessly, almost single-handed, the nation-building project. But, prior to formalization of the Naga nation-state, he fully consulted with the people on the profound political changes henceforth, and established a clear understanding on the future status of ancestral independent communities. And before embarking on national integration, he sets out in the first draft constitution, the framework incorporating the fundamental articles and basic rights. While the Naga representatives strenuously pursued for an amicable understanding on bilateral relation with Jawaharlal Nehru, Congress government. India escalated unprovoked bully and invaded Nagaland in 1954. 
At this stage, the Naga leader could see some progress made, and able to count on a coterie, representing every community and willing to stand together to the end. In September 1954, FISO formed the People's Sovereign Republic of Free Nagaland with the support of Chang chiefs of Tunsan. He also reorganized the NNC setup as the chances of a peaceful settlement declined. In 1955, the Angami leaders T. Sakri, who had served the Secretary of NNC since its inception, and J. B. Jasuki broke off with Fizo at a meeting in the Khonuma village. Fizo got Sakri murdered in January 1956. On 22 March 1956, he formed the Naga Central Government, which was later renamed to Federal Government of Nagaland. FGN in 1959. The new organization had a military wing. The Naga leader, A.Z. Fizo, founded the Naga nation to be a man among men and to be a nation among nations. He had no doubt that the Nagas will be free. A British editor and writer described A.Z. Fizo as the Garibaldi, father of Italian nation of the Naga people. Fizo escaped to East Pakistan in December 1956 from where he went to London. London was not the Naga leader's first choice port of call. But the interminable delay in obtaining travel facilities to visit the United Nations in New York brought him to his former adversary's country. When the Zurich to London flight landed at London Heathrow Airport on June 12, 1960, it was very late. The immigration officers at the airport were predictable surprise that the Naga leader seemingly landed without any evidence from where he arrived. He was taken to an interview room to explain why he landed with no valid documents. The Naga leaders explained that it appeared to him ironical to recall precedent when the British intruders showed up in his country uninvited, the British did not bother to produce valid documents and sought permission. After four hours of intense interview, when the Naga leader explained his mission, the British officials decided that the matter was outside their authority and referred it to the British court. At the court hearing, the judgment was given in his favour. The Naga leader subsequently obtained British passport, having Nagaland status recognised as an independent country written in his passport. AZ Fizo married Jwani on August 9, 1930. After his return from Burma in 1946, for the sake of his country, he hardly had opportunity to live with his family. He served as president of the Naga National Council from December 1950 to April 1990. He continued supporting the secessionist movement in Nagaland until his death in exile. He passed away peacefully at the ripe age of 86 on April 30, 1990 in London. His people came to take back his body to lie in state for the nation to mourn. It was followed by an open-air funeral service and laid to rest in Kohima. This is the full history of AZ Fizo. God blessed Nagaland.